Welcome to In the Desert of Set, a pagan and occult website by G.B. Marion. I'm G.B. Marion. I write about life as a polytheist in contemporary times with random, long-winded detours into ancient history, classic horror movies, and all kinds of other fun stuff. Won't you join me for today's adventure? If you'd like to read a free electronic print copy of the following recording, please visit desertofset.com. Kepesh, the Iron of Set. In Egyptian mythology, Kepesh, the thigh, is the iron of Set. This powerful force was once a part of Set himself, but it was removed from him by Horus during their war for the throne of civilization. It is sometimes described as being Set's bone, foreleg, semen, or even his testicles, which means its removal is sometimes described as a castration. This iron is what enabled Set to kill Osiris, and it was returned to him once he was tamed enough to be reconciled with the rest of the gods. Set now uses Kepesh to defend Ra from the Chaos Serpent, and its physical counterparts in nature include the asterism we now know today as the Big Dipper, as well as the chemical element iron. Kepesh is often contrasted with Wetchat, the Eye of Horus, or All-Seeing Eye, which Set removed from Horus during their fight. We use our eyes to see things, which is why Wetchat is associated with light, knowledge, and order. It represents shedding light on the unknown and making it known. Kepesh, on the other hand, is linked to Set's libido. It represents the unknown's ability to intrude upon the known and force it to adapt. Despite this disruption, Kepesh is an altogether different kind of chaos from that of the Chaos Serpent, for it doesn't threaten to destroy everything in creation. It simply destroys certain things to make room for others. Hence why it is the perfect weapon against the serpent, and in this respect it is often portrayed in Egyptian art as a lance or spear that Set carries into battle. The Iron of Set is comparable to other monster-slaying weapons in mythology, such as Mjolnir, Thor's hammer. Both are associated with red-haired storm deities. Both must remain externalized from their users, for even Thor must wear gloves while handling Mjolnir. And both have strong phallic connotations, as when Mjolnir is placed on the bride's lap during Nordic wedding ceremonies. We may further compare Kepesh to Thurisaz, the third rune in the Elder Futhark, which represents how the destructive powers of nature can be used for protective purposes. The word Kepesh was additionally used for a sword the ancient Egyptians carried into battle, and which is shaped like the Big Dipper. Kepesh was tethered to the star Polaris, our planet's current north pole star, by the goddess Tewerit to keep it as far away from Osiris as possible. It's also kept there as a kind of cosmic scarecrow to prevent the Chaos Serpent from ever attacking our world through the northern sky. In the Greek magical papyri, Set is said to live somewhere behind the Big Dipper, in a secret place that none of the other gods can reach. This realm has been linked with the hermetic concept of Doth on the Tree of Life, and it is sometimes called the Mav Zone, or the Desert of Set. That last term is taken from how the Egyptians considered their country to be the very pinnacle of human civilization. The deserts surrounding Egypt, called Deshret, or the Red Lands, were viewed as protecting it from the world outside. Hence this notion that Set roams the chaotic maelstrom out there to keep the created world safe in here. From an animist perspective, everything about the Big Dipper may be seen as an astral reflection of Kepesh. Bearing this principle in mind, we can make the following observations about Set's iron. 
Number one, most of the Egyptian gods are linked to stellar objects that fall beneath or rise above the horizon, including the sun, the moon, Sirius, and constellations like Orion. These deities are reported to die and rise again, or to accompany other dying and rising gods through their transitions. But the Big Dipper is circumpolar and never sets, representing Set's inability to ever die, while the other gods experience a cyclical kind of immortality. Set's is continuous and linear. Kepesh is what gives him the immense strength he needs to be truly deathless. Number two. Since the Dipper points north, it makes a perfect cosmic compass and has been used as such for centuries. For the ancient desert peoples who worshipped him, it must have seemed like Set was faithfully guiding them through the night whenever they were lost. This indicates that Kepesh, no matter how destructive or frightening it might be, is actually a force for good in this world, as well as its last line of defense from the serpent and its clitheth. Number three. The Dipper rotates counterclockwise to the left, and leftness has always been linked with asymmetry, inversion, and reversal, whether social, political, or spiritual. So Kepesh is tied to Set's anti-establishment sensibilities, which explains his popularity among left-hand path occultists. Number four. The Dipper forms a giant swastika in the northern sky. Now, this is actually a symbol for prosperity and good luck in many cultures. It does not belong to National Socialists any more than crosses belong to the Ku Klux Klan. But that doesn't change the fact that most Westerners react badly to the swastika for reasons that are completely understandable. This relates to Set's reputation as a so-called evil god. Just as he really represents something good, but is mistaken for being evil by outsiders, so too does the swastika represent something good in religions like Hinduism and Buddhism, despite being tied to Nazism in the West. Part of being Setium, in my opinion, involves being able to understand this kind of nuance, which is not easy for many people to do. That Kepish is linked to iron is also interesting, given that this chemical element has traditionally been used to ward off malevolent demons, fairies, witches, and the evil eye. Prison bars were once made from iron to restrict any negative energy that might be emanating from the most dangerous prisoners. Even today, Bedouins still believe that a person who fights with a sword forged from meteoric iron will win any battle. It's a little spooky that the Greek philosopher Pythagoras claimed that Typhon's number is 56, considering that the atomic weight of iron is 55.845, which rounds up to 56. Nor is it a coincidence that iron should be linked to the color red, the planet Mars, or the Kabbalic sphere of Gebura. In the ceremony of the opening of the mouth, Kepesh was invoked into an adze or chisel that had been forged from meteoric iron and which was shaped to resemble the Big Dipper. This adze was then pressed against the mouth of a mummy or statue while the priests recited spells invoking the iron that comes forth from Set. Doing this effectively transformed the inanimate object into a living conduit for a deity or the ghost of a deceased loved one. The principle behind such ritual magic is more or less identical to that of Catholic transubstantiation. Prior to Mass, the communal bread and wine are merely foodstuffs. They don't become the mystical body and blood of Christ until all the magic words have been properly recited. In the same way, an Egyptian cult image started its existence as merely an image. It would not come alive with the spirit of the god or the ghost it was meant to represent until after its mouth had been symbolically opened. Interesting that Kepesh, the same power set uses to stomp Osiris and smite the serpent, can also be used to create magical interfaces between this world and the next. Kepesh is additionally connected to the Waz scepter, which bears the head and forked tail of the Shah animal. 
The name Waz means power or dominion, and the scepter represents the royal power to sublimate chaos. Using the Shah in this symbolism is similar to the use of stone gargoyles in Christian churches. The gargoyles represent dark, chaotic forces that have been domesticated and which now protect us from other forces that are even worse. This reminds me of the parallels between Set and Tokyo's favorite giant monster, Godzilla. Both begin innocently enough, but later become extremely dangerous beings that threaten to destroy the whole world. But then, both are eventually reined in to defend the Earth from evil hell monsters like Apep and King Ghidorah. But I'll have more to say on that in a future sermon. As a final thought, Kepesh is similar in concept to what Christians call the blood of Christ. The latter is supposedly a real mystical substance that washes away all sin from a person's heart. Likewise, Set's iron straightens the spines and opens the mouths of both the gods and the dead. Both objects are formerly part of a deity's body, and both can be magically drawn down by worshippers into physical devices, just as the sacramental bread and wine in a Catholic Mass can become the actual body and blood of Christ, so too can people and objects with Typhonian properties be filled with the force of Kepesh. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this sermon, and you'd like to read some more, please check out desertofset.com. I hope you have a wonderful day. Set bless.